welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon, original air dates June 5th, 1950, and the title is Six Gun Clue. I hope you enjoy. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice... The breakfast cereal shot from guns present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Suppose you were hitting the Yukon Trail tomorrow morning across the windswept, snow-covered Great Northwest. Yes, like Sergeant Preston. Well, sir, you'd appreciate that real stamina calls for a nourishing breakfast. So fortify yourself every morning with a breakfast that includes a heaping bowlful of delicious Quaker-puffed wheat or Quaker-puffed rice with milk or cream and juicy red strawberries or other fruits. Remember, you get added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron every time you eat swell-tasting Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat. Vic Tyler was on his way to Dawson and had stopped to eat his midday meal a few miles from town. While resting for a few moments after finishing his meal... He amused himself by taking target practice with his six-shooter on a tin can which he had set up in the snow about 50 yards away. The sound of a team coming along the trail made Vic pause and look around at the approaching traveler. Vic greeted the stranger. Howdy, mister. Uh, Howdy. Well, what you doing? Taking a little target practice? Yeah. I was peppering that tin can over yonder. Pretty good shot, are you? Fair enough. Well, maybe you'd like to have a little shooting contest with me. <laughs> Fun or for money? Oh, let, let's make it for money. Say, uh, ten bucks? Sure, why not? You got a gun? Sure. Right here, under my pocket. Yeah. Hey, that's a right pretty shooting iron you got. But... Let's see, wait a minute. Let me see that gun. Where'd you get this gun, mister? Well... What do you care? I care plenty. I'm asking you where you got it. I want it in a poker game. If you really want to know, I'll give it back to me before I... Get your hands I... up, mister. Hey, what's the big idea? Maybe you're telling the truth, maybe you're lying, I don't know. But just to be on the safe side, I'm taking you to Monty headquarters in Dawson. Vic Tyler forced the stranger to drive into town, while he himself followed close behind with his own team. They halted in front of Mounted Police Headquarters. Ho, 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 put it, boys. All right, mister, let's go inside. All right. Sergeant Preston looked up from his desk in surprise as the two men entered. Fort Hibbing, what's wrong? Well, search me, Sergeant, but this uh, crazy galoot, he got hold of my gun and made me come here. What's this all about? Well, it's a long story, Sergeant. I'm listening. My name's Vic Tyler. I come from Texas. My brother Stan come up here to the Yukon last year and disappeared. Did you contact the mounted police? Well, sure. I come here to headquarters last month when I first arrived. I was out on patrol at that time. Well, today I met this gent out on a trail. And it turns out he's carrying my brother's gun. Here, take a look at it. Hmm. Tastes so very good. You sure this is your brother? Sure, I'm sure. I'd know that gun anywhere. He had that grip carved specially for him by a Mexican silversmith. You turn it over, you'll see his initials on the other side. That's two. Where'd you get this gun, Mort? I've already told him. I want it in a poker game. He says he wanted it from a guy named Fargo. Yeah, and that's the truth. Where'd this poker game take place? Here in Dawson? No, in a little mining camp called Nuggetville. You, you know where that is? On the Pelly River? That's right. There's a place there called the Mad Dog Cafe. Uh, 
That's where I met Fargo. He came in with a poke full of gold, and I got in a game with him. I cleaned him out. How long ago did this happen? Oh, about two, three months ago. You think he's telling the truth, Sergeant? Yes, I'm quite sure he is. I've known more in a long time. Uh, and I guess I'd better make tracks for Nuggetville. We'll both go there, Vic. If anything has happened to your brother, it's a case for the mounted police. Nuggetville was a squalid community of tents and log shanties clustered around a garish center of cafes and dance halls. When Sergeant Preston arrived there with Vic Tyler after the long, hard trip from Dawson, the two men went first to the Mad Dog Cafe. Do you have that photograph of your brother with you? Yes, Sergeant. I've got to write him my part. I'll talk to the owner and see if he can help us. That must be him over behind the bar. That big guy with the mustache. I'll soon find out. Well, can I help you, James? You're the owner of this place? That's right. Zach Seaton's my name. I'm Sergeant Preston, and this is Vic Tyler. Howdy. Glad to know you. What's on your mind? We're looking for a man named Fargo. You know him? Fargo? Fargo. <laughs> name seems kind of familiar. What's he done? Well, I can't answer that until we found him. Do you know what he looks like? Neither of us has ever seen him, but he's supposed to be heavy set. Has a black beard. Well, I'll sure keep my eyes open for him. Do that. There's another man we're looking for, too. Vic, uh, show him that picture. Sure. Here it is. You ever seen him? Yeah, let me see. I can't say as I have. Who is he? It's my brother. His name's Stan Tyler. Oh, that's sure. Then I'm sorry, mister, but I'm afraid I can't help you. We'll be around town for a few days. If you should get a line on Fargo or Stan Tyler, I wish you'd let us know. Yeah, I'll do that, sir. All right, thanks. Come on, Vic. Zach Salem waited until the Mountie and Vic Tyler had left the cafe. Then he walked over to a table where several men were playing cards. He spoke to one of the men seated at the table. Hey, Perk, uh, come in my office a minute, eh? Right away? Yeah, right away. What's up? Did you see that money that just left the cafe? Yeah, I saw him. What do you want? He's looking for Stan Tyler. Uh, the guy that was with him is Tyler's brother. Holy smoke. I wonder how he traced him here. I don't know. But it must have something to do with Fargo, because he's looking for him, too. What are you going to do? You better get back to the mine right away and tell Fargo to lie low for a week or so until the money gets out of town. What about those supplies we need? Well, what about him? I left an order over at the general store. Do you want me to pick up the grub before I go? You got your sled here? Yeah, it's out back. All right, get your sled and pick up the supplies and then get going to the mine. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and Vic Tyler were walking away from the cafe. Where to now, Sergeant? We'll try the general store. I think we can find out something there? It's worth a try. If either Fargo or your brother lived here any length of time, they must have bought supplies to the general store. The man who runs the store may remember them. Yeah, by God, that's a good idea. Here's the store. Josh Hobart, the storekeeper, was an old friend of Sergeant Preston's. He greeted the sergeant loudly. Well, Ding, bust my height if it ain't Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Josh. <laughs> well, you don't get down this way very often, Sergeant. Yeah, you on a case? Yes, and I'm hoping you can help me. I sure will if I can. First of all, I'd like to have you meet my friend, Vic Tyler. Hi. We're looking for two people, Josh. One of them's a man named Fargo. Do you ever know him? Fargo? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. You do? Sure, he's been in here lots of times. Big guy with black whiskers. Can you tell us anything about him? Well, I ain't seen much of him in the last few months. Guess he's out working the claim somewhere. Used to be tied up pretty close with the guy that runs the Mad Dog Cafe. What's that? You mean Zach Salem? Yeah, that's right. Uh, have you met him? We just came from his place. He told us he didn't know Fargo. He's lying. I always knew that guy was crooked. Hey, here. Take a look at this picture. That's the other man we're looking for. You ever seen him? <laughs> sure have. I grubstaked him. His name's Stan Tyler. Say, your name's Tyler, too. Any relation? Yeah, he's my brother. Well, I'll be dead burned. You'll tell us where to find him? I wish I could find him myself. I ain't seen hiding or hair him for the last four or five months. Well, how'd you happen to grubstake him? Well, it's like this. Stan got wind of a lost Indian gold mine. Supposed to have been discovered years ago by a couple of French Canuck trappers. Maybe you've heard the story. Yes, I have. The two trappers came back to civilization loaded with gold. Later on, got into a brawl and knifed each other. 
No one since then has been able to locate the mine. Yep, that's the story. <laughs> I never took much stock in it myself, but, but Stan heard about it from some Indian whose life he saved. And he was bound and determined he was going to find the mine. He offered me a quarter share of the proceeds if he did. Did he ever find it? Sure. Leastways, he says he did. And he brought back a couple of pokes full of big gold nuggets to back up his story. Then what happened? Well, he gave me a quarter share of the gold, and then he loaded up on supplies and said he was going back out to the mine. That's the last I seen of him. At that moment, the door opened, and the man Zach Salem had spoken to entered the room. At sight of him, the storekeeper's face seemed to freeze. Oh, howdy, Pug. Yeah. Suppose you come back for your supplies. Yeah, that's right. You got them ready? Sure. Sure, I got them right here behind the counter. Yeah. Yeah. Here you are. All right. Here's your money. I'll get your change. Sure must put away a lot of grub, Pug. Working alone, or have you got a partner? I've got a big appetite. Yeah. Here's your change. Thanks. So long. So long, Pug. By thunder, Sergeant. There's a guy you ought to keep your eye on. Why so? Because he's a close pal of Fargo's. Oh? And what's more, he's tied up with Zach Salem, too. Every time he's in town, he hangs around the Mad Dog Cafe. If there's anything crooked going on, I'll bet he's in on it. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. When you're traveling along the Yukon Trail, you never can tell what kind of a scary adventure you're going to have next. Like one time when it was just about dusk, I was on the way back from the dead Dutchman gold mining camp. I was just about... Hey, to... oh, it's an ambush. I'm trapped. Oh, hold that boy. Oh, hold. Don't make a move if you want to stay healthy. I'm after one thing. That there gold. G gold? I don't have anything to do with the dead Dutchman gold mine, if that's what you think. Don't pull that where you got it hit. But I have no gold. Quit stalling. What's in them packages? Oh, well, that's the swellest tasting ready-to-serve breakfast cereal from here to Dawson. It's the cereal shot from guns. Guns. Guns, I got you covered. Drop them guns. I meant that Quaker puffed wheat yeah. and Quaker puffed rice yeah. are shot from guns. What kind of guns are those? Say, when the choice premium grains of wheat and rice are shot from those guns, they're exploded up to eight times normal size. What? Eight times? You betcha. That makes them bigger and better tasting. They're crisp, tender, with bang-up nut-like flavor, too, in every mouthful. Yeah, but I'm after gold, buddy. How do I know there's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in them packages you're carrying? Oh, that's easy to prove. Just take a look at those famous red and blue packages. We pack Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in a fine modern package with a sealed inner lining to doubly protect its flavor and crispness till it hits your table. Yeah. That's why the original, the one and only, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Oh, sounds like the real McCoy. It sure is. As you fellas and girls know, too, your appetite strikes it rich when you pour out a heaping bowl full of those tenderly crisp, melt-in-your-mouth kernels and top them with milk or cream and fresh fruit, like juicy red strawberries. What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give you fellas and girls added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So every morning, enjoy this delicious, nourishing treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Remember, you get exciting Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail cutout models right now on eight different new packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. And a complete gold mining camp is included in the 59 swell cutout models. They're larger, easier to build, and they come only with the big red and blue packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Get yours tomorrow, sure. Now to continue. After leaving the general store, Pug halted his team in front of the Mad Dog Cafe. Zack Salem was standing behind the bar. 
He greeted Pug in surprise. What are you coming back for? Come on back in the office. I got something to tell you. Yeah, yeah, come on. All right, Spillett, what's wrong? I went to the store, like you said, to pick up the supplies. Yeah, yeah. That Mounty and Tyler's brother were there, talking to Josh Hobart. Uh, holy mackerel. Hobart knows you're a pal of Fargo's. He knew Stan Tyler, too. Yeah. And he also knows that me and Fargo work for you. Yeah. He acted mighty funny when I came in the store. Tried to pump me about why I was buying so much grub. Yeah, by this time, he's probably shut off his mouth to Sergeant Preston. Uh, it looks like we're really in the soup. You know whether Preston followed you when you left the store? I ain't sure. I looked down the street when I come in the cafe, but there were too many people milling around. <sighs> Well, I guess we'll have to do something about that red coat. Such as what? I've got an idea. You know that cabin you and Fargo were living in last summer when you were panning gold? Sure, I know it. Why? Take your team and drive there, but don't go the shortest way. Circle around through the hills. How come? While you're doing that, I'll make a beeline for the cabin, so I'll be there by the time you arrive. Yeah. Then what? If Preston doesn't trade you... You go on to the mine from there, no harm done. And what if he does trail me? Then we'll know he's wise to us, and we'll give him a nice, warm reception. <laughs> I like your idea, Zack. I like it a lot. So do I. Now get going. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and Vic Tyler had taken up a position from which they could watch the front door of the cafe. Here comes Pug now, Sergeant. He's leaving the cafe. Yes, he's going over to his team. Looks like he's heading straight out of town. Come on, we got our teams and follow him. Right. Two hours later, Sergeant Preston and Vic halted their teams at a small cabin in the hill. Okay. There's Puck's team, Sergeant. I wonder if him and Fargo live in this camp. What I'm wondering is why he took such a long way around to get here. Maybe he figured on throwing us off his trail. Well, there's only one way to find out. What can I do for you, Monty? You can let us in, and then you can answer a few questions. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Wait a minute. The dog stays outside. What's the matter? He won't hurt you. I don't like his looks. All right, King. Stay outside. <laughs> Now, what's on your mind? Ever hear of a man called Fargo? Sure, I've heard of him. Any idea where I can find him? No, I haven't. What do you expect to do with all those supplies? Eat them. Like I told Josh Hobart, I got a big appetite. Hmm. Why'd you come to this cabin? I live here. Nobody lives here. The place is stripped bare. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I'm just moving in. Look, mister, in case you don't realize it, I'm here on police business. A man's disappeared. He may have been murdered. It's obvious that you and Zach Salem know something and you're both covering up. Now, are you going to talk or shall I take you back to Dawson and hold you on suspicion of murder? Get your hands up, Preston. You too, Tyler. Zach Salem, eh? Yeah. That trap door came in mighty handy here, boss. That's right. Get your gun out, Pug, and keep it covered while I climb out of here. It'll be a pleasure. You made a big mistake, Preston. You shouldn't have come to snooping around. What do we do with him, Zach? Kill him? No, not yet for a while, anyway. I've got a better idea. Such as... We can use a couple extra hands at the mine, can't we? <laughs> yeah, we can at that. Be able to get the gold out faster that way. All right, let's tie their hands and take them out there. Now, what about that dog of Preston's? And what about him? Now, that mutt looks mighty vicious to me. We'll have to do something about it. Where is he? Outside. Uh, I didn't want to let him in for fear he might get your scent and give the game away. Uh, we'll shoot him when we leave here. Now, come on. Let's get these two tied up. A few minutes later, come the on, crooks Dad. finished tying their prisoners' hands and prepared to leave the cabin. Now, then, you two, start marching. Pug, you open the door. All right. Watch out for that dog. Don't worry. He won't make trouble with a bullet in his head. King was waiting just outside the door. Go, King! You missed him. He got away. He's skulking out there in the underbrush. Ah, forget him. Let's get moving. Get that team's lined up. Night was falling as the travelers entered a narrow, steep-walled canyon, thickly overgrown with trees and underbrush. They halted their teams in front of a lonely cabin with lighted windows. Oh, there! Ho, ho, ho! All right, you two, get on your feet. We're going inside. Come on, inside come on. the cabin, a haggard, unshaven man sat eating his meal at the table. Across the room from him sat a heavy-set, black-bearded man holding a cocked revolver. As the prisoners entered the room, the man at the table jumped up from his chair with a startled expression. Hey, 
Vic, how'd you get here? Holy smoke, it's my brother Stan. <laughs> Long time no see you, gents. Howdy, Fargo. Hello, Zach. Howdy, Fargo. Howdy, Fargo. Who in thunder are these two Jaspers? Well, it's a long story. The young guy's name is Vic Tyler. He came up to the Yukon to find his brother. And he got this Marty to help him. They started snooping around, so naturally we had to take steps. What are you going to do with them? I figured we might as well put them to work. With three guys working the mine instead of just one, we'll be able to get the gold out a lot faster. <laughs> That's a right smart idea. The prisoners' hands were untied, and then they were allowed to eat while the crooks sat guarding them with drawn revolvers. When the meal was over, the prisoners were herded into a small back room, the door of which bore a hasp and padlock. All right, inside you three. All right. Sleep tight, gents. Don't make any trouble unless you're hankering for a little going over. There were no windows in the room, and as the door was closed and padlocked, the three prisoners were plunged into total darkness. They conversed in hushed voices. Say, for the love of Mike, what's this all about? Uh, it happens I found a lost Indian gold mine. Made the mistake of talking about it at the Mad Dog Cafe. Hey, what happened? Zach Salem heard me talking. Told Fargo and Pug to follow me. Trailed me here to the mine and captured me. You mean they've been keeping you prisoner ever since? Oh, that's right, Sergeant. Make me work the mine for them. Fargo and Pug take turns guarding me. Why, the dirty pool catch. Where is the mine? Just a little ways from the cabin. Tunneled into the wall of the canyon. You can't see the opening. All covered over with brush. Well, how are we ever going to bust loose from these outfits? We may not be in as bad a spot as you think, Vic. Counting on help from a certain porter. What do you mean by that? No use talking about it now. I'll wait till morning and see what happens. The following morning, the prisoners were released from the locked room and given breakfast. Then Fargo and Pug prepared to take the prisoners out to the mine and put them to work. All right, gents. Get moving outside. <laughs> yeah. It's time to start earning that grub you've just been stowing away. <laughs> Fargo kept the three prisoners covered with a gun while Pug opened the door. As the men emerged into the cold morning air, Sergeant Preston cast a keen glance at his surroundings. The cabin stood in a small clearing with its back almost up against the canyon wall. On the right, a well-beaten path led away from the cabin, evidently to the mouth of the mine. Hug, you go on ahead and open up the mine. I'll ride herd on these critters. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we'll have to get some more tools to keep the three of you busy. <laughs> at that moment, Sergeant Preston saw what he'd been looking for. A slight movement in the underbrush bordering the path. Fargo was walking behind the prisoners, keeping them covered with his leveled revolver, while Pug had already reached the end of the path and was clearing away the brush and shrubbery which were used to camouflage the mine entrance. The sergeant waited until they were a little closer to Pug. And then he shouted, Get him, King! King came charging out of the underbrush and sprang at Fargo's back, knocking him to the ground. Without even glancing around to see what had happened, Sergeant Preston darted forward to deal with Pug. Oh, no, you don't, Preston. Pug tried to draw his gun and fire, but the Mountie's hand clamped his wrist with a grip of steel. The two men struggled desperately, raining blows on each other with their free hands. Stan and Vic had been stunned with surprise by the sudden development. Vic was the first to recover his wits. I'll get Pargo's gun. You help the target. Pargo had dropped his gun and rolled over on top of it as he sought to ward off King's savage attack. As Vic tried to dislodge him, Zack Salem rushed out of the cabin. Stan shouted a warning to the sergeant. Look out! Here comes Zack Salem. He's got a gun. Yeah, now get you first. Down, Stan! As he spoke, Preston summoned up all his strength and knocked Pug unconscious with a single terrific punch. That moment, Zack fired. Stan had flung himself to the ground and the shot went over his head. Before Zack could take careful aim at Preston, the Mountie, too, had dropped to the ground and picked up Pug's gun. Zack's shot had gone wild, but the Mountie's bullet had found its mark. Man alive! Close, close. Oh, That's why they got Fargo's gun, Sergeant. Get this dog away from me. All right, King. Let him up, boy. Vic, keep Fargo covered while I take a look at Zack. Right, Zack had fallen face down. Right, Sergeant Sergeon. Preston picked up his gun, on, then rolled the crook's body over to examine his wound. How about right it, Sergeant? There. Is he dead? Yeah. No, but he's badly wounded. I reckon it'll be a long yeah. time before he's in shape to pull any more crooked stuff. Yes. Ten years it's at least. Right. The same for Fargo and Pug. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what you meant last night. When you said you were expecting help from a certain quarter. But I sure know now. You knew King had followed us here. That's right, Vic. I was sure he would. King's always at hand when I need him most, aren't you, fella? <laughs> Thanks to you, old boy. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Jose's Return. 
Hooray, says Mother, when she discovers that the real bargain in breakfast cereals is delicious Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice. Yes, indeed. It's a deluxe family breakfast. Not like the bargain cereals that the family won't eat or really don't enjoy. The youngsters go for wheat and rice shot from guns because they're exploded up to eight times normal size. They're extra crisp and tender, full of delicious nut-like flavor. And Dad always reaches for the big red and blue package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with a picture of the smiling Quaker man. Because it's such a refreshing breakfast dish, topped with milk or cream and fresh fruit, like luscious, juicy red strawberries. And Mother herself knows it's a bargain in nourishment. Gives the whole family extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Remember, the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice comes only in the large red and blue package. A fine modern package with a sealed inner lining. That lining serves to doubly protect the flavor and crispness until the moment you pour it into the bowl. For that reason, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here's Sergeant Preston. You sent for me, Inspector? Uh, yes, Sergeant Preston, I did. There's an unusual case in Selkirk. A Mexican, Jose Aldamas, has been murdered. His partner was held as a suspect. It's an involved case concerning the ownership of a mine. I want you to go and clear up the matter. All right, sir. I'll leave within the hour and take King with me. Come on, King. We have an assignment. <laughs> There's more to the case than Sergeant Preston thinks. And before his assignment is over, he may find himself resorting to unusual methods to solve it. One man has been killed, and Sergeant Preston himself may be the next victim of the killers. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat. And Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.